Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a case of a very unusual Lima anastomosis, an iatrogenic Lima anastomosis to the great cardiac vein. The patient is a 70-year-old former uh, who underwent a cabbage uh, for stable angina about two years ago at an outside hospital. He got a Lima to the LED, a vein graft to the OM, and a vein graft to the PDA. He did very well after cabbage uh, until about two months ago when he started having angina again, but really only with very uh, strenuous exertion, uh, such as splitting wood. He underwent a nuclear stress test with his cardiologist, uh, which showed anterior ischemia uh, with a low normal ejection fraction. On cath, uh, both the RC and circumflex were occluded, but thankfully both the vein graft to the PDA and the vein graft to the OM were widely patent. Uh, the lima is shown here. Now, the lima is clearly uh, widely patent, but this angio really made us do a double take. Where is this going to? It, it certainly doesn't look like it's going to the LED. Here is the LED. Uh, there is no competitive flow. And we'll also, also notice a focal stenosis uh, just beyond the origin of the large diagonal branch. So it actually looks like this lima was anastomosed to the great cardiac vein, uh, which then empties into the coronary sinus, which has a fairly uh, severe stenosis. There is no communication with the LED. So what do we do with this? Uh, do we treat with uh, just medications? Uh, this patient really only has angina with very strenuous exertion. Or should we call a surgeon for a redo cabbage? Or should we stent the LED and coil the lima? Or should we just stent the LED and leave the lima alone? It really wasn't completely clear what the best course of action is. So here was our plan. Um, there are really two questions here, one of revascularizing the LED and the other of whether to occlude the lima. So to decide whether to revascularize the LED, we're going to do an FFR and see objectively uh, how ischemic the LED territory is. And to decide whether to occlude the lima, uh, we're going to do a right heart cath uh, to measure the amount of left to right shunt uh, from the lima. Uh, we're also going to see whether the shunt has started to cause uh, elevations in the right side of pressures and maybe even uh, pulmonary hypertension. So FFR the LED was 0 0.72. So in fact, the LED territory is ischemic and we felt that revascularization was indicated, especially since the LED lesion compromised such a large uh, myocardial territory. Next, we uh, did the right heart cath, and remarkably, uh, there really was no step up in oxygen saturation from the SVC and IVC into the pulmonary artery. So there is no measurable left to right shunt. And furthermore, uh, the right side of pressures were fairly normal, as were the pulmonary pressures. So there was no pulmonary hypertension. So should we revascularize the LED? Yes, we thought that the sensor was yes, since most of the LED territory was ischemic with an FFR of 0 0.72. Should we call the Lima? Uh, we thought that this really was not necessary as there was no measurable left to right shunt and the right sided and pulmonary pressures uh, were normal. So we went ahead with PCI, uh, which uh, was fairly straightforward. Uh, the LED and diagonal wired very easily, and the LED was uh, pre-dilated with a 3.0 millimeter balloon and stented with a 3.5 millimeter uh, drug loading stent. After stenting, uh, the LED looked good, and the large diagonal branch, uh, which is now gelled by the stent, uh, looked good as well. We then did OCT of the LED, uh, which showed a well-sized and well-expended stent. Um, there was a reasonable apposition of the stent struts, and there was no evidence of edge dissection. And here is the uh, final angiographic result, which we thought was quite satisfactory. Uh, the patient was discharged the next day, and he is still doing well uh, without angina, uh, now uh, two years after uh, PCI. So why did this patient feel better and do well for so long after his cabbage uh, if the LED territory uh, was ischemic? 
Well, this is purely my speculation, but I suspect a lot has to do with his severe coronary sinus stenosis, which uh, for him turned out to be quite uh, fortuitous. Um, the intentional creation of a coronary sinus stenosis is actually a recognized approach uh, to treat medically refractory angina in otherwise unrevascularizable patients. The NeoVasc uh, coronary sinus reducer system is designed to do just this. And the idea is that a stenosis in the coronary sinus would increase uh, dwell time of blood in the coronary circulation. And so, and therefore allowing more time for myocardial oxygen extraction and therefore reduce angina. So could this patient's coronary sinus stenosis essentially have been acting as a natural uh, NeoVasc uh, coronary sinus reducer? And moreover, could the coronary sinus stenosis have effectively limited the left to right shunt and therefore protected the right-sided and pulmonary artery circulations? Perhaps, um, certainly an interesting thought. Now, not surprisingly, there isn't much out there in the literature about management of Lima anastomosis to the cardiac venous system. One of the few studies in this case uh, was this case report from Korea in uh, uh, 2011. Uh, they were also faced with a situation of an iatrogenic lima anastomose to the great cardiac vein. They ended up having to stent the left main into the LED. And um, however, unlike our case, uh, their patient's coronary sinus was normal uh, without the stenosis. So they ended up having uh, to coil uh, the lima. Now, coiling the lima could be quite tricky as you certainly don't want your coils uh, to migrate into the vein. And in this case report, uh, they ended up having to coil the lima with larger coils uh, that would be less likely to migrate. All right, uh, take home messages. Um, iatrogenic anastomosis of the lima to the great cardiac vein is extremely rare. And not surprisingly, management is not completely clear. And depending on uh, your patient's specific scenario, uh, one could consider a redo cabbage, uh, PCI with coiling of the lima, PCI alone, or perhaps even medications alone. And as we saw in this case, FFR and a right heart cath uh, could be helpful in your decision making. Thank you for watching.